Hi, it's Wonder Cat here. I've just got back from three amazing weeks in Tokyo. Glad to be home, though, like sleeping in my own bed and getting a bit of rest. It was non stop for those whole three weeks. But I've arrived home with an amazing art haul that I'm going to share with you today. And boy, I'm still recovering from lugging that suitcase around. As well as that, I want to share the five top art stores in Tokyo. They may not be the absolute best art stores in Tokyo, but they're my five favourites. So stick around and let's get this art hall party started. First up, I've got a few things that I bought from the Kakamori Inkstand store. I've got a separate video on that, so I'll just show these briefly. But the nib pen, I love their packaging, it's just really lovely. And the ink colour that I made. Muji is a great store to check out when you're in Tokyo. I know they have stores all over the world, but when you're going to the ones in Tokyo, they have a lot more variety and they're a bit cheaper. I love the Muji sketchbooks so much. I feel like they're such great value for money. I got these two pens to check out. They're not a brush nib, they're a much harder nib. And I might go back and get some more before I leave. I'm a bit of a sucker for pens. Um, so what I got was this, you can tell I've been using it already, um, it's like basically an exercise book for school kids, Japanese school kids, but I kind of really like the idea of drawing on this paper, I've been doing some just sketches of people when I've been out and about, and that cost less than a dollar. Um, these, uh, these style sketchbooks I also love. I love that they've got the little tie so that when it's in your bag you're not getting your paper all mucked up and everything. And you can get this smaller size one. Again, I've been using this, you can see. Um, 20 sheets. It's got a really hard cardboard back so that you can have a bit of support. You don't have a flippy floppy sketchbook, but you also don't have the weight of having um, a hard cover that you've got to carry around all day. It's, yeah, perfect compromise, I think. I've got the smaller one, and I've got two of the bigger size ones as well. If you're an artist or you're just interested in color, then you definitely have to check out Pigment in Tokyo. It is the most amazing store. They sell pigments, as the name suggests. Um, the stores in Tenozuwa, which is, you have to catch the monorail out of Tokyo. I used to work there 10 years ago uh, when I lived in Japan and it is like one of the best train trips. It's only about 10 minutes on the train, but you get a gorgeous view over Tokyo, um, the bay, looking over to Rainbow Bridge and everything. So, mm, worth getting, going out there. I didn't actually buy any of the pigments in the store because I wasn't really sure what I'd do with them. I don't make my own paints. I don't do a lot of that kind of thing. And I thought I'm just going to leave them there to look at. I mean, they are very beautiful to look at. And But they do have an online store as well. So if I have buyers will not buy as regret regret not buying um i can always go online and grab some so what did i buy i bought two of the japanese ink stones i got the ink stones in two colors this one's a turquoise it's kind of hard to tell from the packaging but it's a really gorgeous um turquoise blue and this one's a darker indigo i yeah we'll do a swatching with those what they do is you put some water into this little dish, you rub the stone and it creates a liquid ink. So you don't have to carry a huge bottle of ink around with you. You can just have this, you don't have to worry about spilling it, you don't have to worry about it 
leaking in your bag and you end up with ink over everything I yeah definitely will do a video later showing how this works Gouache. Gouache. I've been buying so much acrylic gouache since I've been in Tokyo. I just cannot believe the prices compared to what I'd pay in Australia. I went to Uematsu in Shibuya and they've got some fantastic stuff downstairs. A lot of traditional Japanese um, brushes and inks and that type of thing. But I just went straight for the acrylic gouache. I these tubes, which are massive, 100 mils, were around twelve dollars, and um, that's going to last me for a long time. I got the white, black, yellow, red, and cobalt blue, figuring they're a really good mixing range. I pretty much could just use those five colors, but then. I also had to get some of the Japanese because some of them were just so pretty. The sky blue, I love that colour. The blue black or black blue, they have both in the this range. Black blue. Um I've already got some but it's one of those colours that you just use all the time. That one there, sky blue. And then I got these last two for Sleepy Anne. I was messaging her while I was in the store and she asked me to pick them up. So the greyish green and yellow green. Both gorgeous colours. Okay, this is where it starts getting a little bit extra. I went back to Sakaido. Um, I'd already bought a heap of stuff there when I first got to Japan, but there were, I thought I'd pick up a few more things. Um, I'd bought the large tubes, five of the la large tubes of primaries, but I wanted to get a different blue because, well, it's blue. You can't have too many blues. Then... Okay, these aren't all for me. Some of them are for my sister, Sleepy Ann, as part of her Christmas present. I want to get her a set of the Turner Japanese Grange. But when I was looking at the sets, anything that's bigger than your basic set has the iridescent or pearl colours. And we're both not pearl colour people. As much as I love a bit of bling, I would like to keep it out of my um art kit <laughs> yeah so now I grabbed a bunch of Holbein the ash colors they just look so gorgeous I've got the ash look at that in focus ash green ash rose Ash yellow that I would actually call olive. That's not an ash colour. Ash blue. I'll do a swatching of all these when I get home and have all my stuff to swatch with. But just now I'll give you a look at them. I also got just in the basic whole bind the ice green. I have that one at home. I have the peacock blue at home. But they're colours that I really love. So I figured get some spares of them. Then... This was the Christmas present for my sister, which if she's watching, she better turn off now. And I wasn't sure what to get, so I just went for colours that appealed to me. I actually was in the shop laying them all out to see what made a nice palette. So with these, there's deep pink, the J is for Japanese. Sky blue, need to get that in focus, sky blue. Cypress. Not sure, I think that could be a really dark green, even though it doesn't look it. Um, Jay Grey. Yep, 
Enamel. It's not a very appealing name, is it? Enamel. Makes you think of nail polish. Yellow brown. I don't usually go for purples, but I like this really muted. Um, that's grayish purple. And then, last but not least, dark yellow. Okay, wow, they could have given these more appealing names. And then I also grabbed this Aya Nami Blue. Not a Japanese colour, but it was a dollar, like a hundred yen. So I'm like, yeah, throw that in. And that's what I got in the paints from Sakado. And then grabbed a few pencils and things. Don't want to throw them on the desk too hard and break the leads in them, that would be terrible. I bought these markers, some of these Marvi markers, the first time I went to the Sakaido store and really like them. They got a really nice brush on them. They're like a dollar each, so I got the yellow, yellow and red. The first set I first few I bought were all greys, bluish grey, so these will add a bit of pop to that. Then Echo Lines. I love Echo Lines and these were no cheaper than what I'd get them in Australia or from somewhere like Jackson's Art. But I've wanted the greys for a while and I haven't been able to find um, greys in the Echo Lines. So when I saw them I had to just grab those. I got this just to use while I'm here. I've probably got a red woody at home, but I didn't bring it with me and I really wanted a red, so I'm just adding that to my art kit while I'm in Tokyo. Only got a few days left, but hopefully I'll get a lot of drawing done. I've seen a lot of people use these pencils that have the multicolored leads, and I always thought it was not my kind of thing, but I figured I'll give it a go. You never know until you try something. The Holbein pencils here are cheap, but then I can get them fairly cheap in Australia, so I didn't want to go crazy with them. I just got these Sax Blue, Mustard, and I can't read that. I'll put it up to uh, this one. I have really bad eyesight, and that gold writing that's sort of a bit shiny is impossible for me to read. Then I also got, I'm finding there's a lot of yellow and I don't have, I've got some yellow pencils but none of them really pop, it's not that sort of really bright bright yellow that you'd see in neon signs or in sort of things on the street here. So yeah, a bit of a luminous yellow. I hope that works, I hope it gives that pop. Then an even thicker light yellow glaze, not gaze. Um, yeah, and this is an Albert Dura. Oh, I didn't realize that when I bought it, and I think that means it's a watercolor pencil. That could be fun to play around with. And last but definitely not least, my all time favorite luminance pencil, which is the dark indigo. I've got a few of these at home, I always buy like a heap of them because I love them so much. But the two I bought with me are just tiny little stubs about this big now. And so I can't wait to get home to replace them, I need it now. The Caran Dash pencils are actually more expensive here than um, anywhere else I've bought them. But I needed it, I needed it so badly. I mean check it, check it out. Poor tiny little pencil. It's done such hard work. It served me well, but it's getting a bit, bit small. Now I've got the nice long one. 